Jaws and he's got bongos and he's got bowerons and he's got balalaikas inlaid with genuine mother of plastic brought all the way from Belarus. They even light up in the dark all by themselves and he's got bazookis and he's got guitars. He's got guitars made in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Tokyo and Tumavara. He even has guitars made from tin cans by geriatric chimpanzees living rough in cardboard boxes on the streets of Pulawani. They're lucky to have a job to go to. And he's got boxes of strings under his counter for every stringed instrument under the sun. And if he didn't have the string that you were looking for, for your mandola, he'd go into the back of his shop where using only an ordinary pliers and bits and pieces of broken strings picked up from the floor, he would fashion for you the finest bronze wound beauty you ever saw in your life. And if you wanted a ball in it, he put a ball in it. And if you had the misfortune to lose your temper at a session and hit a heckler over the head with your mandola, he put no your broken mandola into the back of his shop where using <laughs> only an ordinary pliers and bits and pieces of a broken Appalachian dulcimer, an old hurdy-gurdy and Gorilla Glue, he'd repair for you your mandola and hand it back to you looking as good as new, better in fact than the day Joe Foley put it into your hands somewhere up in Rat Farnham and he has wind instruments to beat the band and he has whistles. Big whistles, small whistles, short whistles, long whistles, high whistles, and low whistles. He even has slow whistles for the slow learners and the musically retarded like me. And he has CDs sprawled all across his wall featuring every blessed man, woman and child that ever played a traditional note in their lives. And if he didn't have the CD that you were looking for, he'd go into the back of his shop where using only an ordinary pliers and bits and pieces of broken CDs picked up from the floor, he would make for you a first edition copy of the greatest hits of the legendary Tom Lawler volumes 1 to 24, or whatever it was that you were looking for yourself. And he has harmonicas on the bottom shelf, and he has concertinas on the top shelf. Shelf, and he has fiddles and flutes that look so cute you'd nearly think they'd play tunes all by themselves and he has a mountain of books about music as big as Kilimanjaro he's got books of tunes piled up on top of more books of tunes he's got a book that will teach you how to restrain yourself at a session if a one-armed man walks in and starts playing the spoons he's got books of songs and he's got books about books of songs and he's got books about songs that were turned into movies and books about movies that were turned back into fucking books and he's got a book that will show you how to play the kazoo, the tambourine, the glockenspiel and the didgeridoo all at the same time and he even has a book written by the legendary Tom Lawler that comes with a free DVD that will show you how to wink and smile and play killer tunes all at the same time. And if he didn't have the book that you were looking for, 
He'd go into the back of the shop where using the spawnly and ordinary pliers and bits and pieces of scraps of paper picked up from the floor and an old school satchel. He'd make for you a first edition leather bound copy of Chronicles Part 2 signed by Robert Zimmerman himself or whatever it was you were looking for yourself. And the day that the man from the Trade Descriptions Act came down from Dublin and walked into Noel's shop, he said to him, Mr. McQuaid, it has come to the attention of my superiors up in Dublin that you were selling a man from Donegal, a Japanese-made, handcrafted, 2,000-year-old, authentic, antique, traditional Irish slide trombone. And we all know, Mr. McQuaid, that the slide trombone is not a traditional Irish instrument. Well, that's where you'd be wrong, says no. My great ancestor, Gandalf Winston Boogie McQuaid, the great blind wandering trombonist, born in Caterpillar in the first century, was the first man to introduce the slide trombone into mainstream traditional Irish music. He wrote hundreds of killer tunes, jigs, reels and slides on the slide trombone. He even made his own slide trombones. He is known worldwide as the Stradivarius of the slide trombone. I see, said the man from the train description site, who had travelled all the way from Dublin. And I suppose that you have proof of this, Mr McQuaid. I certainly do, says Noel. And he went back into the back of his shop, where using only and ordinary files and bits and pieces of more scraps of paper and the label from the broken appellation dulcimer, and he made a document that the fellas up in the National Museum of Ireland would only die to have in their collection. I see, said the man from the trade descriptions office, who had travelled all the way from Dublin. This is all very fine, Mr McQuaid, but this document doesn't show me how the slide trombone could possibly be Japanese made and genuine Irish all at the same time. <laughs> Obviously, says Noel, you fellas from Dublin know nothing about traditional Irish music, its history and its heroes. Did you not know that my great ancestor married a Japanese one called Yoko from Kyoto and she was the lead screecher with the experimental combo called the Copper Ono Band. And while the great man was blindly wandering the roads with his trombone playing killer tunes at sessions up and down the country, Yoko took over the running of the workshop. And she had sisters over in Kyoto and they came back to Karasavine to give Yoko a hand with the making of the slide trombones in the workshop. You can see where it's going, surely to God. So, says Noel, when I was overheard in the back of the van talking to a man from Donegal, selling him a Japanese-made check, handcrafted check, 2,000-year-old check, authentic antique check, traditional Irish slide trombone check, check, check. I was in no way good, bad or indifferent in breach of the Trade Descriptions Act. In fact, I was being 100% accurate. Sources know all. You can take that information and you can shove it politely or whatever other way you wish to shove it up your yin yam turn round, go back out that door and fuck off back to Dublin where you came from. And you can tell your superiors back up in Dublin that recently the readers of Roots magazine Hot Press and Rolling Stone voted Noel McQuaid's traditional Irish music emporium to be the best musical shop in the world. And, says Noel, if you ever darken my door again, if you ever darken my door again, I will personally <laughs> drag you into the back of my shop where using only an ordinary pliers, I will without 
mercy with old anesthetic liberate your Leroy the in slow motion oh, from your scrotum and you will never play another traditional note in your life again he's a traditional man I'm just